Welcome back to the Green Journey, um, the podcast we have here at Canon Forest. Tonight we have Rich and Rob, and we're going to be talking about veterans and CBD. And also, Martha Stewart got so high, she had to pop 20 um, gummies of her own CBD so she can calm down. So, yeah, what you guys think about um, the veterans and CBD community? I'm, I'm looking, I was reading here, it says, the VA published in 2016 that 66,000 veterans received treatment for opioid addiction. And you know, CBD alleviates pain, diminishes inflammation, enhances mood, and is an effective remedy for a variety of other uh, elements, both physical and mental. And uh, we know we're talking about how, um, say, Gabbert, right? She's, she's in uh, Phoenix, is it Phoenix, Arizona? Who? Um, Both the Gabbert? Uh, yeah, that, is that uh, Hawaii? Hawaii, yeah. Hawaii. Yeah, so uh, we know that um, there's a. You're still active field. duty, too. She's active duty guard. Really? I didn't yeah. know her. So yeah, she uh, when she was like doing her presidential run, she had to like take a break because she had to go do uh do her uh do her weekend warrior stuff. Like much respect to her. Yeah, that's props because it took his reserves. Uh, so I gotta look that up, man. I'm not, I don't follow politics like I used to. Yeah, Tol Tulsi's legit, man. I liked her. I wish she I wish she would have got more of a bigger Push. a bigger nod, but uh, the powers that be that run Washington just didn't like her because she actually took on the Clinton campaign and, uh, you know, people, people don't like that. So. <clears throat> yeah. That's like my big props. Cause you said, you know, you're saying that she's pushing to get, um, CBD to the, um, the VA. I hope we, I hope it happens. And a lot of us with PTSD, stress, you know, anxiety, depression, and, uh, it's crazy. You know, like I got lucky, I, you know, for me, because um, then, you know, in Florida, they had a brand new building. So I was like getting care like whenever like I needed. Like I know like other states, it just it takes a long time to get the proper treatment. Well, COVID right now is actually like every time I go, I, I had appointments at the VA since this whole COVID thing. It's, it's, you know, in Houston, I mean, I really hate to say it. It's one of the worst I've ever been to. But uh, since this whole COVID treatment treatment is like they're so bored that like no matter who you are they want to help you it's uh you know are you you know what do you need you know we're going to help you you know saying hi they're friendly and uh yeah i i actually do not like the houston regional va it's uh it's very very one-sided down there let's put it that way it's uh, mm. yeah they 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 it's very very bs um I have to say it's it's one of the most racist ones I've ever been to, and I'm the wrong race down there. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's, yeah. like, that's crazy, man. I mean, it, 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 it sucks too, man, because all you want to do is just you want to get help, and you know that they don't they don't want to help you. So it's the government working for you. Yeah, I need my weed, man. Government needs to. I, I can't wait for the day when the VA can prescribe MMJ like medical marijuana. I know it's gonna be cool to go to the pharmacy and be like, "Hey, I need my, I need my weed, my my weed prescription." <laughs> there gonna be so much long lines there. Like, <laughs> all the old, all the old, um, well, what's gonna be weird friends. is how many people are actually gonna try and sell it. Like they're in the VA. It's gonna be, like, it's gonna be a black market going on right there. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> well, isn't, isn't there some kind of black market right now where some soldiers are still using it? I mean, obviously on the hush yeah, side. Yeah, Say again. Aren't there soldiers still using it? I mean, now. Um, mm -hmm. Active duty? Hush. What are you talking yeah. about? Uh, active duty, yeah. I mean, if they are, they're kind of dumb. I mean, they don't have no. They'll kick you out just for that stuff. Yeah. There, there, yeah. There's no. There's no questions about it. I mean, you can't be. You can't be in a deployable status and and you know popping positive. I don't, well, I don't know as a sailor. Uh, I know some of my friends who smoke weed, and then they. But well, this was like in the nineties and two thousands. But they smoke, and then they uh they go in the um, the head shop, right, and get the drink, and then um, just like two three days before they flush the system out. And one of my friends, he got caught, and he like uh, he he was just above the limit. He, so he, I guess he had he did another day, extra day of the um, the, the drink. You know, he'll pass a test, but they, they kicked him out. But, you know, like if they're going to do this, still, I know soldiers will still do it. So I know they probably, some of them probably still doing CBD and stuff too. Yeah. I mean, when I was on Camp Pendleton, I mean, we had guys that had like shit, man, 
they did raids. They had ecstasy labs. They had meth labs yeah. and, 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 you know, base housing. I mean, we had one raid. It was like 400 pounds on, on base. It, like it, it was wild. Like base, they, they should do like a real housewives or like base housing. You know, it's, uh, it's the stuff that goes on in base housing is the story, crazy. man. I remember, yeah, I remember the base being, uh, pull up in the, in the port, you know, get the ship fixed. <laughs> your base house and all the crazy stories, the parties and stuff going on. Dude, it's it's yeah. it's it's wild. You know, the Westpac widows, you know, when the guys go on deployment, they all go out to the bars and they just mm -hmm. think they uh, uh trying to pick up on younger dudes and you just like, man, you you can spot them from a mile away, man. All the little Filipino women <laughs> not, not to go in there, man. It's, uh, the West Westpac women? Westpac widows. We call them oh, Westpac, Westpac widows. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll tell you guys a story. So it was, um, I think it was my second deployment. So, uh, you know, officers and enlisted not supposed to mix together, right? And so one guy, he got caught. And so the captain made him go, we're in the middle of the ocean now, <laughs> go on video chat. This was like 2000, 2001, maybe, somewhere around there. So this was like before, um, you know, like Instagram and stuff. He had to go on video chat with his wife and let him, let him know he got caught. <laughs> and then he got booted out afterwards, man. In trouble, like, put him on like, blast. You could do anything. Like, from my experience, you could probably do, back then, you could probably do anything you wanted except cheat on your wife. Like, you couldn't get caught um, cheating. That was like a big no-no, man. Like, I don't know how it was for you, for Rich, but for us, like cheating was like the top of the list of our no-no. Yeah, I mean, I, w I was single when I was in, so... Uh... <laughs> you know, it didn't matter to you. <laughs> it, was, it was all it was all hands on deck. When was... <laughs> so, you know, we, we had a good time, man. And you know, I was a I was a corpsman, so I mean the the fraternization between like nurses and corpsmen back in the day was uh, was a little rampant. Um, you know, I was twenty one. I was single. You know, you're dealing with nurses that are. Uh, you know 21 22 and you know they're single and you know it's like it is what it is what it is man it's i mean things happen um yeah but i mean like none of that stuff really i mean i was stationed at the, the hospital so they really weren't as uh i guess they didn't know about it tell you the truth i mean but they didn't really tell you to like hey you need to stay away you know <clears throat> unless you were just like dating them <clears throat> I got some stories. You guys want to hear some stories? I don't know how far we want to go with this podcast, but let it out, man. Let it out. So, all right. So, hope for this. I have two stories, right? So, the first one is <clears throat> there was this girl, very promiscuous in the ship, right? And everybody like was like sleeping with her. Like I me, mean, I'm different. So, like I was like, I'm not, I'm not getting into that. Like. I, the girls like, make some money on deployment, man. Like you hear uh, girls coming coming back on deployment, two thousand dollars richer. You're like, I don't remember. I heard stories about that, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't remember if anybody on the ship was doing that. And I was on a LHD, so it was pretty big ship, like like maybe yeah, the aircraft carriers are the worst. Yeah, but come find out, everybody's stuck getting them crabs, man. <laughs> crabs. Just <laughs> 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 to get to one girl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like. She's like, babe, you have no crap. I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not doing anything on the ship. <laughs> Go find it. This girl got everybody crabs, right? Oh, and then uh, all of a sudden, when you go up to medical, man, like you see like, they used to put a condoms, man. And it got to the point where, I can't remember, there's a drug. There's some kind of drug that they give for, the, for that kind of like disease and stuff. It's before they prescribe it to you. But all of a sudden you see it like, like, in little, like when you go to the desk and you, you check in, you just have it all there for you. So like anybody can just come and take it because like, you got so bad where the ship like it's like an STDs. So they're like, no, that's 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 doing yeah, it. yeah, they're like, fuck it. You don't have to get a prescription anymore. Just, just take. And they start having condoms everywhere. Oh, <laughs> so, I don't know how many guys. <laughs> I don't know how many guys that came to the, came to the room. They were like, Doc, uh, you know, I, I did something, and he's like, All right, you need some, you need a receptor shot. You know, the kill all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, man. I mean. It's, yeah, it was, it was it was fun, man. We got people get caught, like um, Marines getting caught with girls in the um, in the bed. <laughs> they have, I guess the sex was so good they fall asleep. You have in the morning they come, um, the master arms comes around and check everything to make sure nobody's sleeping or doing anything. Come find the uh, Marine and the um, 
Yeah, me the girl just cuddle up, man. Like good <laughs> love. <laughs> they were like, yeah, that's some just some stories, man. Like, but we gotta do like one day do a, uh, another podcast and just share some stories. I got some, got some really good stories. You know? Yeah, that ship life, y'all. I never went on a ship, but that ship life, man. You hear stories and you just like that stuff is just not for me. <laughs> like, no, nah, no. Nah. My cousin was on a submarine and he he even tell you some crazier stories, man. It's just like, dude, There's some tight quarters right there. Yeah, those hot, those hot racks ain't cool. <laughs> yeah, like everybody knows, man. You can't hide that stuff, man. When you when you small space like that, like everybody knows, like so. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the joke about submarines? Hunter go down, fifty couples come back up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 bubble heads, <laughs> bubble heads, man. Them bubble heads are weird. I don't know how y'all do that. Did you, did you ever, have you ever thought about going in, in the uh, in the military realm? You know, it's funny. Um, after high school, I was gonna enlist into the Marines, and I graduated in June of two thousand one. Uh, just be- obviously, just before September eleven. And uh, I was talking to a couple, of, a bunch of my older cousins, and then they're like, you know what? If if you can get financial aid, just go to school, go to school, and then later on you can go to the military. But try it out here first and see what kind of education you can get um, before enlisting. And if you do, um, you know, I can help you find you know the right branch or whatever. I'm like, yeah, all right, sure, sure. And never enlisted. I stayed in school, and that few months later, September 11 hit, and there's a whole new mogul game, and then. Oh, yeah, they were they were taking dudes from boot camp and marines and they were putting them on the front lines yeah they're like you want to go they're like hell yeah <laughs> my whole story was like shit i would have listened to the marines in that summer i would have been gone the next year yeah, right yeah. back then yeah. yeah i was like shit who knows what would have happened to me if i would have enlisted but i was like man i don't i don't know it's it's a weird weird dynamic that everything kind of came together do you have any regrets never doing it what's that you any regrets never going to see what it was like? Um, yeah, because I, I grew up very militaristic because I was trying to get into law enforcement. So I was mm. I was doing all these cadences and when I was doing physical work trying to get into law enforcement, I got really militaristic as far as like my physical fitness and you know, um, learning, learning, all, learning all the commands. And I liked it, but never got in obviously into the military. But there's some times I think about maybe I, I would have been in the military, would have been pretty, pretty, pretty cool. How old are you? 37. And you got one more year, man. One more year. I thought about it the last couple of years ago. I was like, should, maybe should I, I, I shouldn't enlist. You know, maybe even just part time or just something to get some kind of uh, experience. Cut off like thirty eight. I think the, you're too old for the Marines, but I think the Army and the uh, yeah the Navy, or the Air Force will take you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still remember a guy in Meps, man. He he uh, he was trying to get in. I think he was trying to get in the Navy, and uh, he he failed his. He got like a twenty on his ASVAB. Ooh. And the guy just looked at him and was like, just t- picked him up, took his paperwork, took him right over to the Marine Corps. Said, These guys will take you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a passing score? Like, what's a legit score? If you, you know, <laughs> well, there's, there's no failing, but you have to have like certain grades on, like, to do certain jobs, right? Right. And uh, I think I, I got, I got an 84. And, uh, so I mean, they gave you, they give you the pick of the, what you want to do with like an eighty four, but like, yeah, twenty is like you know, less unless you. Get... <laughs> well, twenty twenty is like you know you're a boatswain's mate, you chip and paint, dude. Like, you know, or you're bottom, down the bottom. Yeah, or you're or you're gonna go be a grunt. You know, there's two choices, <laughs> and you're probably a better grunt. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's great. I, I never took it. I mean, I mean our, uh, a lot of the Marines that were recruiting in our high school were like busy, busy. So they, they, they snagged me in a couple of times and I was on that, on that path. But for whatever reason, one of my cousins had a better, better thought process for me. And, nice, man. That's the worst boot camp I would ever want to go to, man. But that's what yeah. she said. She's like, well, no, no, not as far as like the discipline and everything. I think it'd be all good, but I mean, but your boot camp is right there at San Diego uh, Airport, right? So it's right there at the airport. Oh, shit, so that's you're, you're literally getting your butt kicked and watching airplanes land. You're like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I should be in one of those right now. I should be on one hell. of those airplanes get the <laughs> hell out of here. <laughs> to see your escape just flying away. So. Yeah, but there was a time when, like, the, you know, the state, the, the, I guess the Department of Defense was going to allow CBD, um, like, uh, lotions and, like, uh, topicals. Um, 
they weren't going to allow ingestibles, but uh, they were going to allow topicals and all that in there. But then something came out, I think, like a couple weeks ago, the saying that they denied it. So, yeah, like I think, yeah. like, they don't know if the, um, it will go to your bloodstream and get you high. So, yeah, I think, well, I mean, but that also goes back to, you know, you, you small companies or your companies out there with, with the testing. You know, it's, you know, you got to know, you know, what you're putting out there. And, you know, these guys that are trying to get this push out there, they probably couldn't get this stuff you know, consistently going across the board that like it was going to be, you know, below, below the, uh, the, the legal limit. Yeah, it's funny because when I worked for a CBD company and I would go out to San Diego to do, you know, get my sales going and I was out like an Oceanside area and um, I actually went to a, a, a supplement store and the guy's like, oh, I don't, I don't sell CBD here because I got a lot of military, active military and they can't have any, but there's a, a something going around that the US Navy may approve in a couple couple months or like a year or whatever the case was. Um, so I may be available then, but right now I don't carry anything that's CBD just because I don't wanna give the wrong person the wrong product. And so I'm gonna stay away from it until it gets cleared at least through one branch and then I can kind of start dabbling a little bit more. But yeah, it's, it's a big, big stoppage out there for people that, you know, just trying to get CBD, but they don't know what's in it. And yeah, it's a big liability. I respect that though that he, he did that, you know, because he knew. I think you told me that story too. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. damn, look at the sale. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that. I remember telling you that. But hopefully next year, man. After after all this chaos we're going through with this device and stuff for the election, we get back to you know what matters, and hopefully they'll they'll you know because they need it. I know, especially for if I need it for my anxiety and depression, you know, <clears throat> and my pain. Um, yeah, I mean, my brother-in-law, he, he he came back from the military and he did a couple of stints out in uh, in Afghanistan and uh, he he definitely needs it. But it's like, I can't, you know, got to keep keep with my VA stuff. Otherwise, it gets cut off. Mm -hmm. So he has to be very careful of, you know, when to apply and when to take, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's well, The crazy. VA is, uh, they're, they're really not as bad as active duty. The VA is, you know, my doctor knows I take it. Sure. Yeah. My doctor told and me to cool. smoke. My doctor told me to smoke weed. So, <laughs> yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't lose your benefits if you. Uh, obviously nah, not. Nah, nah. Not unless you do something stupid. But like yeah. my, my doctor, I was taking CBD and cannabis. She's like, I dropped when I dropped it forty pounds, forty fifty pounds. She's like, what you doing? I'm like, I'm taking CBD cannabis and I'm eating better. She's like, she's like, she's so happy. So she, she, she just, yeah. I can't prove it. But she said, you know, if it helps you, then you know. Yeah. The same way. Same way. She's like, if it's helping you, you stick on it, honey. I mean that was the exact word. Because I wasn't I wasn't on pills. She like you want more pills? I'm like no. She like good. She like you know she's happy. Like yeah. Some some the doctors they want it. They want it. Some of them want MMJ. You know, but it's just the system, man. That's all it is. Yeah, they they wanna the doctors at the VA they wanna uh, su su you know supply you know you know tell guys to do it. They're just hamstringed by the by the suits in Washington D.C. Right, right. You know the guys on the 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 ladies and, and guys on the ground they want to help the veterans to do this and get over it, but they're so hamstringed on on what they can do by the suits that the uh, you know they kind of tell you you know I'm not supposed to tell you this but uh, do this <laughs> you know like if it's working we're not I'm not going to tell you to stop. That's good though. I mean, they're not pushing just pills, so they actually want to see results for veterans. So I always figured, like, oh no, they're hot. they're you know they're they're stuck on what regulations they got to follow. And uh, I mean, they do. I mean, but they you know it's it, low, it, low, but, low. It, but, it, but it's up to the veteran as well to sit there and be like, hey, I'm not going to take these pills anymore. I'm uh, that's true, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go this way. So I mean, it, that's it, a very it, tough conversation too, right? When you uh, when you're so stuck on pills, it's kind of hard to see the light trying to get out of it. But it's kind of up to you, you know, they always talk about like your circle of friends, veterans, friends and stuff like that. I mean, you, you got to I mean, there's there's some conversations I've had with buddies and be like, dude, what are you doing? You know, it's like. I mean, you might have to beat the hell out of him. Uh, you know, you might have to drag him, you know, throw his pills away, go through his go through his med 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 locker and, you know, figure out what's going on. But uh, well, you're yeah. part of a bunch of uh, uh, veteran groups, too, right? You guys all kind of. Help each yeah, other out and bring and people you, in. And I mean, you got your, you got your, you know, your your buddies here. And, you know, you do your buddy checks and stuff like that. But you know, at the end of the day, 
you know, it, it, it is up to you to do that, to, you know, ask for help. But I mean, it's also up to your buddies to realize, Hey, something's not going, something, something's not right. You know, it, it's, it's a two way street, you know, that, you know, I don't like it when people sit there and say it's the sole responsibility of that guy to ask for help. But sometimes, you know, you got to be that friend and be like, what the fuck's going on? You yeah. know, um, you, know, you got to pick that phone up and, or you got to go knock on somebody's house. But then at the same time too, you know, the veteran or the individual, just, this isn't just for veterans too. The veteran just can't be crying wolf the whole time. You know, Hey, I'm going to kill myself or post pictures of, of stupid stuff like relating to guns or, or death, stuff like that. Because, you know, um, one day when it's real, everybody's gonna be like, well, he's just full of shit again. Mm-hmm. He's crying wolf. So, you know, but, you hate to be that guy that sit there and doesn't do it because you get tired of it. I mean, and there's a couple of people here in Houston that have done it. And, you know, people, and it, it gets around, you know, You're like I, I love the dude, but man, the guy just cries wolf so much. So, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's up to you as the veteran to, to reach out and ask for help. And then it's on, it's on your circle. And if your circle of friends don't, don't want to uh, help out. It's time, time for you to find new friends. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, yeah. You know, go out to some go support groups and you know find other kind of ways of yeah. getting. Into it, it. You know, I mean, it it doesn't hurt. It's I think you're more of a man to ask for help than trying to do stuff, or a woman to ask for help than than trying, trying to do stuff on your own. Um, you know, but once you ask for help, if those people who always say, hey, I'm here to help you, they don't want to help you. I mean, just scratch them out of your life, block them, erase their number, get them off your social media and just don't ever talk to them again because uh, that, that's a shitty friend. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. When I was dealing heavily with depression and PTSD um, from uh, an event that I had a couple of years ago, it was my circle went really freaking tight, really tight. It's like. I didn't ask for help because I wasn't deep into my depression and PTSD, but it was, it was kind of nice to get reassurance from, you know, a, a ping here or a call there from a buddy of mine. Hey, how's it going? Kind of pulls me back out. Like, Oh, that's right. Everything's cool. Like I don't need the major support, but there's times when like, Oh, I'm glad I got that phone call or you know, got to get that text. And it gets me out of that, that head space a little bit. Um, but yeah, I was searching more like online and kind of, trying to find groups and people that have kind of gone through the same similar experiences because I wasn't willing to just reach out to anybody. For me, it was more like just bottle it in, just, just figure ways out. And luckily I found cannabis and, and hemp and, and that's kind of been my, my light, I guess you can say, kind of gets me out of that, that headspace now. Yeah. <laughs> that what, that, is that what got you into cannabis or was you already doing it? Uh, that was one of the main reasons. Yeah. So I lost my brother about six years ago in a motorcycle accident. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get, you know, we get the call at two o'clock in the morning, something's going on and yeah, we find out he passed away. Um, and after that, it was just a hell hole for me. I was trying to rediscover everything. I was no longer like in, it's in the same headspace. So, um, years and years and years of, of kind of dealing with it all until I finally was like, you know what, let me just just try something different. I, I didn't want. I knew I want to do pills. I didn't want to do anything like that because I didn't think it was that severe. Like I can, I can get out of that mindset. Um, but I was having more, more um, episodes kind of in my own mind and kind of getting that black vision, that tunnel vision of, of um, kind of just depression. But um, yeah, once once I got the green light to me, this is this, this experiment with, with with hemp and CBD and cannabis. Um, it kind of relieved a lot of the the weight on my shoulders that I've been carrying for such a long time, and now it's. Like a daily regimen, yeah. Edibles, yeah. edibles are the way. I don't like I don't like smoking, man. I like it. Uh, yeah, man. Um, condolences on that, but no, I'm kind of glad. You know, like everything turned up because you know we connected and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, man. You know, grateful. That's why I'm like really grateful for the plant, man. Like end of the day, no matter what people say, like it saves a lot of lives, man. So you know, maybe a little bit, may not be something big, but you know, the plant does a lot for people, man. So. Yeah, I, I, I come across a bunch of people, even just when I would do events for my other, the company I used to work for, and just random dude will come up and say, like, dude, if, if it wasn't for CBD, man, I would be still stuck on pills. And it's just a regular, you know, regular guy that's just walking through quickly. Hey, you know, it's one to say CBD really helped me. Yeah, man, it's good stuff. Stuff like that's kind of like, dude, this is why I'm in this thing. This is why, why I, you know, uh, really push for CBD and kind of these natural supplements because this changed a lot of people's lives, but just something so simple as a tincture, you know? Yeah. 
it's it cbd it helped me because i mean i was one of those guys that was hooked on pills uh you no know, neck surgery um 2016 it kind of hit like a, a a wall with it all and it was just uh man i, I don't even remember I, I just remember somehow some way like searching on the internet cbd just came up man and i just dove into it head first i was like let me let me buy some let me try it man i, I tried like over 20 different ones and you know then then i started a company and you know it's with some buddies and uh you know we uh you know even then you know still trying them and you know they all had the same the same stories man it's like you know the va just kept pushing pills down your throat and that, you know, that, spirit, that noise <laughs> and that's me that's me <laughs> I was like, did the, the Google ever um, speak up when you're talking and just start talking to you? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> what? Sometimes was um, Google, like talking. And all of a sudden, the, um, the Google assistant comes on. Hey, you know, like, talk, talk, telling you some subject you, you talked about. You, you, but you no, know, you have to say, okay, Google. But something just pops up on, on there. Like, I think um, Apple One does the same thing too. Not Apple, but um, Amazon Alexa. Oh, Siri? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alexa. That just popped in my head when that happened. Here. Dude, it's uh I was watching the movie the other day and somebody said, Alexa, like, go do this. And like my freaking Alexa turned on and like, started talking. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the hell's going on here, man? <laughs> so uh, how'd you hurt your neck, man? I'm curious. Like uh well you want that's, to a, that's that's a that's another story um, you know that you know being in the military lifting people you know it's a uh, the gurney and then um you know picking up picking up people i think i strained it i hurt my back um but then uh i was working at ups and uh <clears throat> and just picked the box up and uh mm. It was, and it wasn't even like a crazy box. It was like a five pound box. And, uh, man, it just, one thing led to another and, you know, you're on workman's comp and, you know, UPS, you know, they, they flat out tell you, you know, the God bless unions, right. You know, you pay all these unions and then you finally need them for help. And where do they go? They don't do shit for you. Um, it took like seven months to get an MRI, uh, yeah. And the whole time you're like, just get an MRI to figure out what's going on from day one, right? Like get an MRI, let's figure out what's going on. And then, uh, you know, they, they wanted to, uh, then they didn't want to do anything. They wanted just to do like steroids and like put a band aid on it. And, and after a while it was, uh, like your quality of life just kept going down. And I was like, finally, I just said, screw it. Let's have surgery. Then luckily, my brother-in-law's mom knew a uh, knew a surgeon out here in uh, or out there in San Diego. Uh, he was the head of uh, neurosurgery at, at at USD, and um, he did my surgery on me. So, uh, and then my buddy's mom, she was head of the nursing staff at the hospital. So, uh, Miss Ellen, she made sure that I was taken care of really well. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was funny. It was like you know you you're getting all these like and people are just taking care of you real well, and then uh, you know she walks in the next morning and you're like, oh, that's the reason why. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they're coming in like every hour to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> yeah, so mama, mama, mama Nyheim, uh, she took she took real good care of, care of me when I was out there, and uh, you know, ten years later, I mean, it, it sucks. I I. I you know, there's so much technology now with like stem cells and, uh, you know, there's other surgeries out there that you could have instead of just getting, uh, getting fused. So, you know, they, they have a saying in some places that refuse the fuse. So, uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I wish I would have done that. So with, with like all the hurricanes that's going on right now, do you like feel it? Cause I don't uh, know if you read Really, I feel really. I'm, I'm a lot of pain from my, my osteoarthritis. So. No, I carry my stress right here. I mean, the hurricane is just whatever. I mean, there's other stressful situations going on in my life. 
to where, uh, you know, I just went to the doctor today or the, the chiropractor today and, you know, I got a bunch of needles stuck in my neck and uh, around my head, my traps, up and down my back. <clears throat> so yeah, Dr. Tony Tran takes care of me out here in Houston, man. He, uh, he does a good job. So, I, you know, he, you know, the CBD, it helps. Um, uh, you know, I take, I take uh, krill oil from on it. That helps out a lot too with the fatty acids and, uh, you know, uh, and I got diagnosed with celiacs in 2016 after going to a buddy's wedding, ate something really crazy down there in Mexico and it, it kind of, uh, <laughs> wow. all up. but I mean, it, but it's kind of a blessing in disguise because you know how they say gluten is a, is a anti or is a, is a inflammatory mm -hmm. to where, um, you know, it's probably what caused a lot of my headaches as well too. But then, you know, recently I, I kind of just quit drinking and, um, it's kind of it's kind of alleviated a lot of the a lot of the headaches as well. So I know if I have a couple of drinks, like I get headaches, or if I was eating gluten, I you know your whole body just swelling up and crazy amounts of headaches and my migraines. You know I'm trying to learn how to you know navigate through this thing called life now now post surgery, but uh, you know CBD, you know what you're eating, um, you know I still have a couple of migraines a month, but uh, as far as like 2016 was like my peak where it was like, shit, man, I think I had like 14 one month. Damn. Damn, dude. Let's see. Everything happened for a reason, man, you know? So now you know, and now you can take better care of yourself. So yeah, yeah it's a blessing, man. Sometimes little things that happen. Well, yeah. I wish I wouldn't have been diagnosed with celiacs going to a wedding, but uh, you know, that, that, that sucked. And I, and, I, and I still call my buddy and I blame him on it. That I can't <laughs> he got married. <laughs> I, I can't go enjoy a pizza. And I, you know, I mess with his wife and I'm like, I can't go enjoy a, a pizza when I'm hung over because, because he got his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so God bless Mexico. Everybody's been there. It's, it's hey, a good man. time, but uh, cool, cool, cool. yeah, man, I was going to the ER like every month. And, uh, man, I was living off like soup and I didn't really know what was going on. And then, uh, it's funny that I, I met this girl off of, uh, eHarmony like a year ago and we just stayed friends, right? Like you just, I, met, I stayed friends with her and, um, you know, she called me up one day and she's like, she's like, you have celiacs. She's like, everything is you're telling me, everything you told me, your diagnosis and everything. She's like, she's like, you have it. She's like, go off of gluten for a month and like see what happens. And she, and like, lo and behold, I did drop like twenty five pounds. Oh, um, damn. Um, yeah, my, and then like my energy levels and everything just dropped. But then like after the month, like my my sinus infections went away. Like my body just started feeling good again. Like I was able to like actually just like go out and like do things. Yeah, so, cool. Yeah. Being curled up in a ball after you eat something is not cool. Yeah, dude. But, you right. know, they need, like they say, CBD, like it helps your stomach out, right? You know, the endo endocabinoid system, mm -hmm. you know, it helps everything out. Like you're slowly healing yourself. <clears throat> so every time you take it. Yeah, dude. Love it, man. Love it. So let's switch gear because I know we were going for a bit. So um, I just want to talk about Marla Stewart because, like, <laughs> Uh, so those of you who don't know, she started out on CB line. And for those of you who may not even know, Martha found weed because of Snoop Dogg. And they had like a show, you know, Martha and Snoop and stuff like that. So I know like Martha hinted at it for, I can't remember if she ever openly admitted it. I can't remember, but I know she smokes weed. And so she, 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 um, she did an interview. She on TV high. When yeah. Doing, right? those with Snoop. <laughs> like they would smoke weed together. I, well, I think back in the days, like when she did her stuff, I think she used to smoke. She just never like really openly admitted it. Oh, but she bought the Snoop Dogg the day. Yeah, before. and uh, she popped twenty. You know what though? Mar Martha's a G though. She didn't rat on nobody when she went down. <laughs> she she, she took the hell, dude. She went. <laughs> she, to jail, man. She, she was like, I don't care. She's like, I'll go to prison. She's like, I'm not ratting on anybody. <laughs> you know, like mad respect for. Her. She made that money though. You gotta, you gotta give her that props, man. Hey, I, I, I'm not mad at her, but you know, they came at her and they were like, Hey, they wanted her to rat everybody out. And she's like, I'll go to prison. Like, screw it. <laughs> and look at her now. She's 10 times even more popular. She mm -hmm. really she got is, a, she though, got right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, 
<laughs> yeah, gotta love it, man. She didn't rat. <laughs> what do you think she said though? She she popped in 20 pill, 20 um gummy beers and and, and to calm her down. So I'm like, you think she just a tolerance level is so high because so much when she smokes with Snoop Dogg? Or she think she just saying that to promote a company? I think that's the promoter company, but I mean, anybody who knows anything about like THC or CBD knows if you take 20 pills, something ain't right. Like either, either there's no CBD in there or you're lying. Right. You know, cause I mean, I, I told you the story about when we were trying Panacea and uh, you see, see if we wanted to go with those guys so they can white label for us. And uh, you know, we went to a, a Mexican restaurant you know, and they sent these sample packets out and, you know, me and my buddy, you know, being, being dumb grunts, we are, uh, we popped all three of the pills at one time, not knowing it was supposed to be a three, you know, three day pack a three day sample. <laughs> and, you know, we're sitting at the, you know, we're sitting at the Mexican restaurant and, you know, we both look at each other and we're like, man, I'm fucking high as fuck right now. <laughs> these chips are the best chips I've had in my life. Dude, it was crazy, right? you know, like, and the chick was like the girl was like are y'all okay and we're like yeah we just need more chips and sauces <laughs> you know? but you know, and then we get back, you know then we get back to the house and we you know we read the label and we were like oh don't you know it's a three-day supply you know take one daily and we're like well shit man we just took all three at once so yeah read read the label baby because uh you might just get that unexpected trip. But I mean, I also told you about that other day where, you know, that gummy bear I ate and uh, I was high as hell for like six hours. It was like, damn, like <laughs> what the hell's going on in this gummy bear? And I was eating was those gummy. Huh? Just a CBD gummy? Or what was yeah, it? It was a CBD gummy. And, uh, you know, my buddy, my buddy up in Dallas, you know, I, I, I was taking his gummies for a while and they were making me feel good. I mean, I wasn't high or anything. It was just relaxing, like, you know, good CBD stuff. But this one gummy, man, it messed me up, man. It, it was like, man, I was stoned. I was like, man, I ate it. Literally, like, five minutes later, I was like, damn, I'm not doing any work today. I'm going to sit here on the couch, and I'm going to watch some TV. Send me one. <laughs> uh, Send me one of those. <laughs> right? You know, I called my buddy I was working with, and I was like, dude, I ain't going in. And he's laughing his ass off because he's like, <laughs> I was like, sorry. But I wonder how many times that actually happens with CBD products if they have the consistent thing and all of a sudden one pops like crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, um, well, it's like, you know, those THC gummies, right? Like I, I have those uh, those 10 milligram gummies from Colorado. Damn. Yeah. You know, you, you, you expect it, you know, I eat a half of one when I start, when I get a migraine, like when I get a migraine, I, I eat a half of one, but then like, you know, I'll, I'll be a little high, but you know, I'll still be able to like function. Right. Like I think it was like two weeks ago. I ate one, a half of one, man. I was on my ass, like literally on my ass. I was like, damn, there's way more than, ten, <laughs> than maybe five milligrams in this thing, man. I was, I was like, fuck. You know, you do one of those little time warps in your head, man. You, you got to, like, walk around and, like, try and work the stoneness out. <laughs> it's like I say, man, just ride the train, man. Just let it let it take you where you need yeah. to take you. Yeah, <laughs> like that green monkey was – that green monkey definitely put me on my butt, dude. And I was just like, dude. But to, to take 20, 20 CBD gummies to lessen your high, I mean, I, I, that sounds like a promotion thing to me. I don't, I don't know. I mean – I'm not gonna be popping 20 gummies just to get high. I mean, I would Google, shoot, how do I lessen my high? Oh, look, cracked pepper, try that. I mean, yeah. it's not freaking take 20 and see what, I don't know, man. Well, some people do that because, well, like, I would have you know, been in the industry talking to people. Some people just like, they take a CBD bottle and they're like, oh, it's not working. Okay, so they take another you know, milligram. Oh, it's not working. So they keep taking the whole bottle. I'm gonna yeah. take the bottle and they forget that there's a little bit of TAC and it adds up. And all you need is like three or four milligrams if you're a lightweight. And that will knock okay. your ass. So, you know, somebody drinking a whole bottle of full spectrum will get high and then take like hours in before the CBD kicks in. So, I wonder yeah. if, her, if her gummies are, are a full spectrum gummy or if it's just isolate. I, I mean, wouldn't go through But, uh, did I hear? I gotta, I gotta, look, gotta look in that. It's probably, <laughs> probably isolate. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know if I took 20 pills of the of the stuff that I was, you know, taking, 
I'll be high as shit. I don't care what anybody says. That full spectrum CBD, be high. 20 of them, damn. Probably be more high. That's Ooh. a lot. Freaking milligrams. <laughs> they're isolate. See, they're isolate. See, they're isolate. <clears throat> yeah, so it's, it's uh, 10 milligrams per gram. Mm. Magic That's Johnson's in it too. I'm telling you, man, these 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 people are rub his knee. <laughs> Uncle Ben or Uncle Something's Uncle Henry's or something like that. Yeah. You know what you remind me of, right? The old um ex NFL player and then the, the Bangi commercials. <laughs> he rubbing his knees. That's what he reminded me of. Man, he just said rubbing his knees in like <laughs> all that little infomercial of his uh, <laughs> yeah, the infomercial. <laughs> yeah, I was totally like 1970s commercial right there. When I when I do my workouts, bam, I do, you know, X, Y, and Z. <laughs> well, you should do it. Uh, that's really nice, man. I like it. I like it. Yeah, so, uh, oh, man, this was fun, man. This was fun. I think, you know, even though I'm sick, but this was, um, this was a good <clears throat> Dude, 20 milligrams of CBD or 20, 20 gummies, man, to get you right back where you uh, need to be. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I think I'm going to go do that. Take me some. <laughs> I'll let you guys know if I, if, I, if I wake up tomorrow or not. <laughs> You'll be all right. <laughs> you hear from Bevan anymore. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, thanks, guys, man. Appreciate it. So, yeah, we'll, the, we'll continue the green journey without you. We're with you, man. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> and I wish Mike was here, but um, until next time, guys. You know, thank you guys, man. Appreciate you, Richard. Robert. Yeah, it was fun, man. It was cool. Yeah, and guys, if you guys want a topic we want to, y'all want to hear us discuss or uh, questions, just uh, you know, email us, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll bring it on. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Yes. You want to sponsor? Reach out. Anything you know. You want to come on and on, 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 talk with us? Let us know. Be happy to you know enjoy the green journey. Appreciate. It. Have a beautiful day, guys. All right, bud. See y'all soon.